My name's uh, Lee Jackson. I'm a professor in biological sciences at the University of Calgary. And my job is looking at water quality in the Bow River Basin and a few other places. SWIM is a data collaboration platform between my lab at the University of Calgary and IBM. The idea behind it was to create a place where people could park their data to get away from data siloing and start to collaborate on solving uh, important water issues in the basin, the Bow River Basin in our initial case. We've recently moved outside the basin and we're collaborating with the Pigeon Lake Watershed Association. Data accessibility in watersheds I think is really important because many groups collect data but they don't share those data. If we really want to manage water and water issues across a basin, then we need to be looking at data across a basin. In a basin like the Bow River Basin, which is quite large spatially, if we don't collaborate and put data in one place, then we're making decisions without a complete picture. Having data in a platform does two things. It allows people to collaborate, but it also allows people to identify large problems that are across the basin that can benefit from science and data analyses to help address. The platform will host any data related to water. So it can be water quantity, it can be water quality. Water resource management is important, I think, because we don't have unlimited supplies of water. So on the Bow River, we often hear the expression, it's a shrinking river with a growing city. The basin is close to new water licenses over concerns for the amount of water that is left in the river to sustain healthy ecosystems. If we're going to manage this resource, then we need to understand the resource. We need to think about how it might change in the future and how we're going to use water to support our lifestyles and our lives and economic growth. So so yes, the platform will include historical data. Water quantity data for the Bow River goes back close to 110 years because understanding where we are today and how we got to where we are today is informed by understanding where we were, say, 100 years ago. So this whole concept that we're on a shrinking river, we can look at the historic data and actually quantify that amount of change that's happened over time and think about if that is going to project forward, what is that going to mean for water availability and our use of it. So the platform is open in the sense that any organization or person or group that wants to share data and benefit from data sharing can participate. We've done projects with Trout Unlimited, we've worked with the Nature Conservancy, the Bow River Basin Council, SAIT. So more and more we're seeing citizen science projects emerging and we did one with Trout Unlimited three years ago where we produced uh, sampling kits for the scum that grows on rocks and uh, handed those out to anglers and then the kits came back and students in my lab looked at the algae that were in the samples they were looking for one alga in particular. And so there are lots of ways that citizen scientists can get involved and can create good quality data that can be used. We could have people measuring temperature across the basin if we were interested in understanding understanding how much is temperature changing over time, but anglers will go and fish. They can take a, a temperature measurement and then just input those data into a platform like iNaturalist or EpiCollect or FieldMap. Really high quality data that complements the sort of data that we would collect in the laboratory where we're using expensive equipment and established analytical protocols to collect the data. So if people are at home and they're thinking that they might want to contribute to increasing water sustainability and protecting the resource, there are at least a couple things they can do. One is they can become educated on what the challenges are and then do things at home that address those challenges. They also can get involved in initiatives where they can contribute data to something like the swim platform. So water temperature, they can contribute precipitation data. And those sorts of initiatives do two things. They allow people to be part of the solution and the process to make change and understand how data can inform that change, but they also educate themselves and become water citizens in the process. So we need to think beyond our tap to the source of our water so that it needs minimal treatment to maintain the very high quality that we enjoy today. The long-term goal is to have people putting data on the platform, working together to solve problems in the basin. Issues around water quality and dissolved oxygen in the river, water quantity. There may be problems in the future that we don't think about right now that emerge. Could be dealing with microplastics or nanoplastics, anything associated with water, and that could include economic valuation of water-related ecosystem services. But we don't think about the cost of water or the value of water. The problem with not putting a dollar value on water is that if we don't, we essentially say it's worthless. And clearly that's not the case. So the platform will be successful when individual stakeholders get together and use their individual data to solve a problem or do analyses that they wouldn't normally do because they work on their own. You, I think, need to use science and data to make decisions about management rather than just decisions in the absence of, of evidence.